And it is amazing how things change in just a couple of days. Man, oh man. You know what I'm saying, Mike? No, Brian. Actually, I don't know what you're saying. Oh, what, interesting. what do you mean by all of this here? Well, I watched Raw last night, as we all did. Yes. And I think it's very, very clear what is going on. And that is that this coming Thursday, at this press event, I believe that Cody is finding his way into a match with Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. I, I tend to believe that uh, too, sir. But I would say this. I don't know if that's been a change or not. Well, here's the thing. Many things going on here. So first off, All right. first off, and this is obviously 100% an angle, and it has been since, at the very least, okay, at the very least, Sunday, and probably much, much further back than that, okay? Like December. For sure, it was an angle on Sunday because they were already planting those Cody signs, okay? And then if you watched the show last night, I mean, you've got the announcers plugging this Cody hashtag. And what happened on the show, if you missed it, was that Seth Rollins came out and every mention of wanting to wrestle Cody, Cody fighting for Seth's title, Roman Reigns, The Rock, they all got booed. And, I mean, it wasn't even like, they're not even trying to hide it. They know that you want Cody to finish his story. And that was literally what the entire show was built around. So, you know, we were talking yesterday, did they do this to, uh, you know, take attention away from from the Vince thing? And, you know, as Dave noted yesterday, the answer is absolutely not, because they booked the, uh, what's the building in Vegas? Um, T-Mobile. T-Mobile. They booked T-Mobile a long time ago, with the idea that Rock was going to be there and they were going to do this angle, okay? So, what are we going to do Thursday? Well, I mean, there's really there's really two options. One option is Cody is now in a three-way. The other option is, God forbid, Roman needs to wrestle two nights, which was the suggestion that I had a long time ago. Now, how could you do this? I don't know. Honestly, it doesn't matter. At this point, as long as you do it, the fans are going to be happy. But you you could do a storyline where essentially they uh, have a Rock and Roman out there. They sign their contract. And then Cody's music hits. And Cody comes out and he says, you know, I wanted to make sure that you signed that match with The Rock before I let you know that I did win the Royal Rumble and contractually, I do get to pick my opponent for WrestleMania. And you guys can do whatever you want on Saturday night, but I'm picking you for Sunday. And then you've got The Rock and Roman Reigns on Saturday. You've got Roman Reigns and Cody on Sunday. And away we go. I mean, they're pushing this way, way too hard for that not to be whether it's whatever i mean cody's cody's fighting for the title at wrestlemania one way or the other i think that's i don't know what do you want to say 95 percent i'd say so after raw last night it felt like 100 percent, but you, you do never know mm. but i i think that that is where we are are going there and uh cody i mean they did a thing after raw went off the air which is now all over the internet wwe you know they're promoting it everywhere where he came out, Cody, to address the We Want Cody and Rocky Sucks chants, which went on after the show went off the air. And Cody came out and said those three words. All I can say is this. Since I was a little boy who grew up loving everything, for you to want me is special because I've always wanted you. And they took this thing and they put it all over social media. I mean, it's what's happening. This is what's happening. But how they get there and what the actual decision is, we're going to find out on Thursday. I'm not saying that I agree or disagree with any of this, but I could see in their mind, okay, for the hardcore wrestling fan that sits out there and watches us, how are we going to make Cody 
winning it or going to WrestleMania, how do we put a little bit of a twist in that? Sure, he's going to win the Royal Rumble, but okay, how do we put a little bit of a twist in that? And looking at it from a Endeavor point of view, looking at it from a company corporate point of view, Cody Rhodes going over and standing uh, tall over Roman Reigns at WrestleMania would be a pretty big moment. ESPN would love that sort of thing, all that sort of stuff. But what if The Rock was involved in that too? And maybe they have been playing 4D chess the entire time and built all of this in. It was CM Punk that pointed out to Cody Rhodes, reminded him, this is what a CM Punk WrestleMania story is like. So they have actually done what they've done here. Now, do I think that that has been the best way to go about things? Do I think that they needed to insert the rock in this? No, I don't. No, no, I don't. Because I, I again... I think if you're going to end up with a three-way, then that people are still going to want to see Rock and Roman and, and deal with family business after this. And are we going to get Rock for, for two matches? And if that's the case, are you still just then not overshadowing everything else that you have going on? I, I think they've gotten to this and again, not the the way I would have done it, but then again, they've gone with this whole story for the past two years. They've done some things that I would not have done myself, but then, then again, it's paid off for them. And I'm sitting here talking to you, Brian. So I don't know, but what I do know is they are getting the attention that they want out of this. And even though it's not direct, it's completely indirect, but yeah, it does take some of the attention away from Vince. We've seen this as hardcore wrestling fans online. We've seen it where people were, were talking a lot more about justice for Cody and justice for Roman than they were justice for the rock than they were with the lawsuit. So again, there's a lot of multiple things at play here, but they are obviously trying to put their best PR foot forward with everything, which makes it really interesting to see how things are going to turn out in Vegas on Thursday. Although it's a pay and play event. The amount of money I saw that it took to actually have to go to that event and have like, you know, drinks with Triple H or the picture or whatever, that stuff, that's insane to me. That is absolutely mind-blowingly insane that somebody would spend 2500 or 5000 bucks to go to a, a pre-show presser gala gimmick deal. It really does. It really shocks me. Well, it shows you how successful this company is right now. Oh, I was just watching the chat explode when I had the temerity to say that. <laughs> yeah, they're absolutely on fire. This is going to be a giant WrestleMania. And you know, and the you other know clue last I, I night... Guess, uh, hold on. Look, the other clue last night as to what's happening on uh, on Thursday is, uh, you know, Drew still wants that title. Drew still wants Seth's title. Sami Zayn still wants Seth's title. And, you know, they're doing a men's elimination chamber in Australia. Now, why do we need a men's elimination chamber if Cody is facing Seth and The Rock is facing Roman Reigns? Well, you don't need one unless it's like, oh, we're going to fight for the Intercontinental title. The answer is we need someone to fight for Seth's title because it's not going to be Cody. And Punk got hurt. Punk is injured. So... And look, they have insert Drew has always been a factor in something in some way, even if it was not directly going to be at Mania, it was going to be after Mania when it came to one of those two titles. Now we see Sami Zayn firmly entrenched in that. Could we have a case where Sami steals Drew's glory? I think you've talked about that. We still have the wild card of Damian Priest holding the Money in the Bank briefcase. Could he be the guy that screws something up for Drew or screws something up for somebody else along the way? So there are a lot of options that they have there. And again, they're in a good place right now because Punk did get hurt and you have what's going on with Cody and Roman going on over there. You know, you do actually have a good situation here with some intrigue when it comes to Seth's belt. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, 
As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why well, get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.